Hey guys, this is Toto. Today we're going to be making some, you know, suggestions for some quality of life slash easy wins that Marvel Strike Force could do. These things are meant to be things that shouldn't take too long of a development time, or if they do, then they'll kind of be worth it. Most of them should be pretty easy things to do, so we'll see exactly how they end up going. But honestly, I am hoping that at least some of these get implemented. Um, I have passed the list along, but as always, I love to hear your suggestions and everything. And if I hear suggestions that I really love, I'll transfer them along as well. Even ones that I'm like might not affect me too much, I'll still transfer them along because I want to make sure that you guys are represented over at Boundless because, you know, I, I, the whole reason that I started being a content creator was for the community. Like I, when I, you know, I, I've been a content creator for what, four, five years now, uh, five years geez um and i i started doing this for the you guys and so that way you had a voice and so that way i could pass along the information that i had and i kind of want to make sure that i can continue doing that so we're going to start out by updating beta and alpha to have a difficulty 4.4 and 4.5 but not just that part also updating the rewards because these alpha orbs we'll have a look at those in a second and like this stuff here is really out of date and even once you get up to like 4.5 it's still pretty out of date but these orbs are like i get for like they're, they're not kind of aimed towards myself and stuff but even then for new players you're still like let's have a look here like this whole top row this row except for Haller um and winter soldier like, Heller and Winter Soldier are the only probably characters that you really want out of this. An argument could potentially be made for Thanos or something, maybe Green Goblin as well, but these orbs are awful. Like, there's a reason that I'm just sitting on so many of them. Uh, how many did I have there? Like, you know, 200 plus of each of them, because they're just not worth opening. I think the only reason I've opened them is for Ultima Shards. Next up is adding new tiers to the challenges as well as a complete all. So these tiers have not been updated in ages. This gold orb one has not been updated in ages. Like we can have a look here, level 80, gear tier 15. So we're what, two gear tiers behind now? There's gear tier 16 and, uh, uh, 16 and 17 now, and we're still like, you know, behind there. So kind of updating those as well as a complete all button, something that like up here that I can just click and it just does the highest level of every, um, every thing that I've got unlocked. So like, it'll just do, you know, tier 14 there, tier 14 here, and currently tier difficulty three here. So I'll just run through all of those. It's just one click to complete everything for the day there. Next up is a claim all button advanced option. So we all know the issues here. Um, if I go in here, then sometimes it'll accidentally click, like it'll accidentally claim everything. Or, you know, I go to click this daily rewards, which is what I did yesterday to show you guys the calendars and I accidentally claimed everything because if it lags a little bit, then something just put in an advanced option in here to be able to make it so you can claim all the same thing should be, you know, a claim all button like that claim all button there should affect other stuff. So like a claim all button for the milestone, uh, for the daily objectives there for milestones and stuff. If I spend like a whole bunch of energy here, then I've got to click them at one at a time. It's even worse with the golden opportunity where you've got 21 milestones that's 21 clicks that i've got to do if i spend you know six million gold and it, it's just time consuming so something that you can just save time it's just that little bit of time there that you can save every day similar to how you know i really like this button here I really like that button there. It's saving me two clicks. It's saving me a little bit of time. Extend that, extend it to, you know, saving up more time everywhere else. All right, next up is an open all orbs or like a slider or something like that. So like if I go in here and let's see, so these legacy orbs, I've got to click five times to open all those, but that's not even the worst one here because I'm still sitting on, look, what's that? 18,000 of these. I just want to open them all, <laughs> but I don't want to open them 10 at a time. It just takes forever. It, it's also when I, when I don't open my, you know, orange gear early enough, like, look at this, I've got 505 freaking teal gear ones sitting there. I just want to be able to open them all with one button or, you know, open 10, open a hundred, open a thousand kind of thing, or like a slider or something like that. 
Next up is buffing these old achievements. These achievements here honestly freaking suck. Look at this. I'm going to get three Hulk shards who have had seven star forever and 50 health packs, which are useless. Like that's complete useless stuff. Um, like there's some in here that aren't too bad. Like this is well, that's level 95, so that doesn't really count. Um, but like getting like one gold orb here, one gold orb and 20 cores. These are newer ones as well, and they still suck. Like they just really need to go back and buff old achievements. And when they buff the old achievements, then either uh, give a payout to everyone as to like the, the ones that are buffed or something like that. Like if you've completed a buffed one, then give the payout to it. Or you could just use them as a catch up mechanic. So changing them now would mean that they're a catch-up mechanic for people who haven't completed them, which is something that we're dearly missing. All right, auto-launching raids. This is a big one. Uh, one, the, ta the oh, what's this? Um, the ticket system probably will cause issues with this, but the ticket system absolutely really sucks. So there'd have to be a way to kind of work around it. But either way, auto-launching your raids, so that way you don't have to have an officer on every single time you want to launch a raid. Um, have it so that, you know, you set a time, so say 7 a.m. every day, and it auto-launches the raid at that time, and then you can kind of progress through it that way. Um, makes a lot of sense to me, at least. Uh, so that way it it's, makes it easier for, newer, uh, for like, the officers and... Um, stuff from uh, your guild. Next up is fixing the bottlenecks for newbies. There's certain bottlenecks that newbies have because they progress too quickly. Stuff like some of the earlier um, ability materials, uh, some of the earlier gear and stuff like that. If you progress too quickly, then you end up kind of running out of that gear and stuff. That gear should be really easy to get. Purple gear should be really easy to get. Uh, the uh, green, blue, and purple ability mats should be really easy to get, that kind of stuff. Because it's just like, if if you progress too quickly, it then punishes you for doing that. And then uh, adding in another use for these, uh, these here, these blitz things. These here currently are just basically useless for like anyone who's kind of progressed into the game. Um, you can see here that like, I've got 1,700 of like 1,800 of some of them, um, because I've obviously got some at one point that was specifically that one or something like that. Um, like I've got 86 of those ones, but either way, uh, it's just kind of like, they just sit there. Like I, I hate sitting them sit there, but I'm also not going to open up like a thousand orbs for no reason. It's just a waste of time. So having another use for them, maybe for orange gear would be nice. Like having these open orange gear orbs nowadays, given the fact that like the, the veterans have all progressed past orange gear. So making it so that that way it can be another catch up mechanic would be great. Buffing the gold orb. Gold orb hasn't been buffed in forever. Just buff it. Like the, the minimum that you get from the gold orb sucks, especially when you're making a save for them. Giving the shield tag to Kestrel and the Spider-Verse tag to Morbius and Agent Venom. Spe uh, Kestrel currently is like specifically in her lore. She's a member of Strike, which is a subdivision of S.H.I.E.L.D. She is a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent that has been working for Strike, her subdivision. Like, she's still a member of S.H.I.E.L.D., so she should have had the S.H.I.E.L.D. tag all along. It would be a huge buff to allow her to be able to actually, you know, do stuff in the Gamma Raids and stuff. Um, and the Gamma Raids are something that I'll talk about a little bit later. But it would allow her to be able to help with the Gamma Raids, the S.H.I.E.L.D. area and stuff. And then the Spider-Verse tag on... Morbius and Agent Venom. We got the spider Vest tag on Mr. Negative and Kingpin. So having it on Morbius and Agent Venom, it's just a flavor. Like spider Vest is just a flavor tag currently. So it'd be great to kind of see that. Um, just to have them on it. it. They're both members of like the Spider-Verse area of the comics and everything. Morbius is a huge member, like a, um, like started out with um, being a, like a villain for, Spider-Man, I believe, or at least he has had a lot of stuff to do with Spider-Man and stuff. Um, let's see, what was his first appearance? Yep, The Amazing Spider-Man number number one, volume one, 101. Like he started in the Spider-Man comics and everything. Um, and then there's also obviously Agent Venom, who's got a huge amount to do with um, 
with the you know the spider verse like i shouldn't have to explain why agent venom should have it uh, next up is making it so the pim tech buffs work in raids if we're not going to buff them immediately like i i think they're going to get buffed next patch but making it so that this stuff here where they've got like in dark dimension buffs work in raids as well would be a huge 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 help um, they're obviously not am amazing. They need some stat buffs as well, but even just that, making it so that they get the, uh, make it so this in dark dimension stuff works in raids as well would be really helpful and would really help them be able to actually go through that gamma raid. Um, if you're not going to buff them, I would prefer a buff and reworks to them, but we'll see. Next up is arena history. So just like in war, how you can see like, you know, the history for your war attacks and stuff like that. And just like in Cosmic Crucible, how you can see like, oops, that's not it. Um, just like in Cosmic Crucible, how you can see like this stuff here. They should have something like that for war to be able to see who's attacked you and what they used and stuff like that. Um, preferably with a replay, similar to how you have the replay in Alliance Wars, but we'll see. Uh, bringing back the silhouettes and teasers. This is probably one of the biggest disappointments I've had lately. And it kind of, how do I explain it? It kind of disconnects me from the actual Marvel Strike Force, um, like social media and stuff. They used to have these big, um, like silhouettes so you'll be able to see from the next patch and they'll show like you know the four different silhouettes who is it you'll never guess um and i think that would be really cool to kind of bring that back but they haven't and it's a shame that we're not getting those kind of silhouettes and teasers and equip all button for iso 8 so if we go this let's say the yellow jacket right here say for example let's not go to yellow jacket because i don't have any blaster apparently do I have controller? Yeah, I got a bit more control. Say, for example, I wanted to equip ISO 3 on I, I, uh, on Ant-Man here. I wish that there was a button here that I could just click that would make it so that it added, you know, tier 3 for all three, like all five of these different things. Because if I'm taking this to tier 3, then there's a high chance that I'm going to take this to tier 3, this to tier 3, this to tier 3, and this to tier 3. It's just a small kind of time saver that I think would be really great to see there. Uh, increasing the dark promo credits. We're not getting enough darker promo credits. Bring them back and make it so that we're getting more of them. Uh, my rogue's been sitting here waiting for dark promo credits for ages, and I'm just not getting enough. I feel like I spent them on Archangel at one point as well, because I'm getting so impatient to get 3,500. Um, being able to switch characters in the team select. So if we go in here and I go to attack someone, not doesn't matter who I attack here. If I like, say for example, I want to switch the position of Rogue and Kang. I'm going to uh, unequip both of them. Uh, I need to go find Kang. Where's Kang? If I don't sort for him, <laughs> I need to go find Kang and then I need to go find Rogue. Like that. Um, but if there was a button or a way that I could just drag, like this is, this is a mobile game. Take advantage of the touch screen, make it so I can just drag characters across and switch them around. It would just be so much better and so much easier. Uh, portraits for skins. There are some amazing skins in Marvel Strike Force and it's a shame. Like, for example, one of my favorite skins of all time is Storm. Um, but if I want to use Storm here, where is she? Mr. Sinister, Psylocke, Red Skull, Girl the Witch, we're almost there. All right. So say, for example, I want to use Storm here. This is the other version of Storm. This is, this is not the Storm I like. The Storm I like is the costume that they brought out not that long. Uh, actually, it was a fair bit ago now. Um, which is, where is she? Yeah. This costume here is amazing. This is one of the best costumes they've ever added, purely because of the fact it changes up what Storm looks like so much. But there's no representation that I have this costume outside of me actually seeing the model. So this portrait here should change and then being able to change this portrait up here into, you know, the, the costume would be amazing, especially given that you've just gone to the effort of creating these amazing horsemen um, costumes. Um, 
like the rogue one. This is amazing. This is amazing. This should be like a portrait by itself. Absolutely love it. Um, but like, as I said, there's no representation of me having that until you actually see it in battle. So I think that it would be cool to be able to see the portrait here for the costume that you've got equipped. Because obviously, if you've got the costume equipped, you love that costume. So it should be there to be able to kind of show off. Uh, next up is changing the blitz back to every six hours or, or making it so that... Um, there's less blitzes per day, so not that whole six blitzes, uh, sorry, eight blitzes. If you didn't know, each character can only blitz eight times per day for free. Um, otherwise, it goes on a really long cooldown until your global, like your reset, your your daily reset. So when, when these stuff re reset, um, they should make it so that was less or, you know, it's it blitzes every six hours or something like that. Like there's... Balance it around a normal person's day rather than someone who can sit there and blitz all day long. Uh, next is removing characters from the Ultimus orb, including Ultimus, when you have them maxed. At the moment, in here, 95... Whoops, not... I mean, that's useless, but that's not what I was getting at. 95% of these characters in here are useless to me. Like, I don't care about Zemo. I've already got him Max, Yondu, Yellow Jacket, Yelena, X-23, Wong I do care about. Uh, this whole row I don't care about. There's one person in this row, one or two people in that row there. No one. No one. Actually, wait, I think Starlord's a child I need. Do I need Kestrel? Oh, I still need Kestrel too. Um, there is a lot of useless stuff in here. Making it so that that useless stuff isn't in there would be good. Even if it's just removing Ultimus from that orb, I think would be huge. All right, and then the final one here is listing people who aren't in raids at the bottom of the raid. So, here. So, this is my alliance here. Um, I am third on damage for some reason. Usually, I'm not. Um, down here, it should show the people who aren't, who haven't joined. So, like, I don't know who hasn't joined. I don't know, someone who hasn't joined <laughs> down here. They should be shown down here and then grayed out. That way it makes it easier for your alliance leader to be like, go in here, scroll all the way down to the bottom and be like, okay, uh, Inked hasn't joined. Let's go annoy Inked about it or something like that. Who knows? Um, there's lots of stuff that would be easier to be able to do that, um, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys. What quality of life slash slight easy improvements would you like to see? That's it for today. Have a great day and goodbye.